um, different frame configs, blah, blah, blah. Here's a really sexy part, too. Um, it's going to have over-the-air and GPS sync. So if it's all the same system or, you know, where everyone can see each other well, it'll run over-the-air synchronization, or you can GPS sync by adding an antenna to it. Um, you'll be able to co-locate a bunch of them at the same time, and the lab guys are swearing up and down that it's going to support sync with uh, current Motorola Canopy and point-to-point -point systems. So they swear up and down it's going to work, and when we get that worked out, it's going to be really big for co-locating with uh, lots of other different equipment and, you know, sort of snugging up next to your big iron that you've already got in place with some of the ortho stuff you may have or existing 5 gig distributions. Being able to sync all those together is going to give us a lot of abilities to uh, make everyone play and happy in the same sandbox. All right, so that's the products. That's the really fun part. Uh, we'll talk about our management system now, which is called WNMS. So there's several different components of the system. You can see a little graphical layout. But basically how it works is you've got the reporting agents run on the devices themselves. They report back to the data collectors, which you can run all to get on one system. Or if you have different networks, you want to spread out the load, you can run separate collectors on each network. They all talk back to a centralized MySQL database, handles everything together. And then you can, you've got the monitor daemon and the mail sending utilities. That's a different chunk. And then the web management where you can actually log in, log in, take a look at things. Um, so all these places sort of play together. They're all segregated, but they all work together to perform the common goals. And if you look at this very snazzy looking drawing that I definitely didn't do because it looks good, you can see, we'll start at the top. Like, it's your stuff your typical data management system do. So it'll run stats, give you reports on, you know, throughput, errors, so on and so forth. You can do inventory control. So you can log all your serial numbers tied to locations and everything, which is really handy and gives you the ability to uh, make yourself a little bit less paperwork spread out. Um, there's all sorts of alerts that can run with monitoring. So, you know, you can assign different alert priorities or monitoring levels or, you know, run it just on the back halls and APs and not, you know, the end devices or whatever. You can run configuration from the management system and maintenance. So if you want to push a new config out to a bunch of devices or do firmware updates or something like that, you can do it. It has the uh, intelligent device discovery and provisioning. And basically, you pop a unit. As soon as it starts talking to them, it'll pull up in the system. You can provision it directly from it. Helps roll out and installs quicker. Yeah. And uh, you also have the visualization on Google Maps. So it'll give you a Google Map layout, and you can drill down and look at everything. It'll do the alert statuses and everything there. So it gives you the ability to get like a, a bird's eye sort of view on where the network rides. And the cool thing about all of this is that it is free. We like free. Well, you like free. We like paying, but, you know, we're feeling generous. But um, this whole system is free. You can actually download it right now from the Legal Wave website. Go to the Legal Wave website. Go to Applications. You'll find the Quick Install Guide. It'll walk you through how to do the Linux install, Windows install, so on and so forth. So all that right there on the website. Uh, also speaking of free is our Link Calc application. Link Calc is a pretty nifty little tool that we developed because, uh, you know, we deal a lot with people looking to run calcs that aren't necessarily experienced in doing it. And there's a lot of free tools that are out there, but for the newbie, it's a little bit of a, a learning process to get that going. Um, there's pay tools out there, but a lot of those are extremely expensive. So we're like, hey, let's develop a point-to-point -point calculator people can use, you know, Mainly it was developed for internal use and for distributors and stuff to use to make their lives easier. Um, but ever since we launched it, this thing has become hugely popular. And we run, you know, thousands of links a week on this, both our stuff and other people's stuff. And uh, it's been a really, really nifty little tool. I use it for myself all the time just to do sanity checks or detail just depending on, you know, what I'm looking to do. So you just go to legalwave.com slash link calc, sign up for an account. Once you do, you'll see this screen. And you'll see, basically, you can name, you've got your name fields, so you know, whatever you want to call it, science. On both sides, you've got the ability to set the radio type. So if you're using our P2P3 or you want to use the 620S 11 gig, you punch that in, it'll automatically populate things like transmit power, receive, gain, or, uh, receive sensitivity, stuff like that which is really handy. 
Uh, if you want, you also have the ability to run a custom setup. So if you want to put on your own radio stacks, and that's fine too. Punch in your latitude and your longitude. Uh, the heights of your antenna, and of course that's AGL or above ground heights. Go down, you'll see the frequency, polarization, any extra cable losses. That's all self-explanatory. Site climate, and eh, doesn't do so much right now. Just ignore that for now. Units, English or metric, or ITU. Now. IT rain rate is an incredibly important field because it's what tells you what your link availability is going to be on your high throughput links above 10 gig. Now you got to remember that 10 gigahertz and above is where your rain really starts coming into play. The water droplets in the air attenuates the signals really heavily at those higher frequencies. The higher you go, the more attenuation you get. So what this IT rain rate is, is it's basically the average max 0.1% of the time, like what's the worst rain you'll get for a given location? And you'll get things like here in Atlanta, the uh, value is 66 as well give you. So 66 millimeters per hour, that's what it considers a monsoon sort of flood. So it punches that in. And there's a little look up button. I didn't show it on this picture, but on the, um, the current version it does. All you do is hit look up, and as long as your Latin Lond are valid, then it'll automatically populate that rain rate. And then what it'll give you, uh, this is blah, 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 what I just talked about. So you run the link count, and it gives you this pretty picture. Now, we'll get to the, the rain rate and stuff, because I'm going to harp on that some more here in a little bit. But it gives you the picture and the layout and all these stats. So if you look on the top left-hand corner, you'll see total path loss. It'll give you that. What your received theoretical signal level should be. Yeah, RP, self-explanatory. Your fade margin, which is important your distance, your link availability. Let me talk about link availability some more. So 5 gigahertz, like if, if you put in a rain rate, it's just going to say 100% all the time because the rain doesn't really play into the 5 gig band. But let's say you're running an 18 gigahertz link, and it's 5 miles, and you're in Georgia. So when I run the link count, it's going to give me a calculation, and it'll say 5 nines, link availability. You hit the little uh, icon beside it, and it'll give you a breakdown of all the different modulation rates and the percentage uptime for all of those and what your fade margin is. So when you look at that calculation, you'll see, hey, you know, I see a 256 qualm, my, my, my rate might be 99.95. You're like, well, that's okay, but not super. But you drop down to 128 qualm or 64 qualm, and 64 qualm might be four nines. Uh, QPSK might be five nines or something like that. So all these different percentages, you know, like how well that link's going to run. And let's say you're getting, you know, you ran it with two foot antennas, you're like, well, that kind of stinks. I want better reliability. So you go back in, calculate with four foot antennas, and once you're done with that, you'll see that your 99.95 is now 99993 or something. You're like, hey, four nines, I'm happy with that. So this is, this is all incredibly important when you're planning out your license link stuff and your 24 gig, especially that you look and see what your percentage uptimes are going to be. And just because you see five nines at QPSK, you got to know that, well, it will always run at this level, and I know I can turn it up, and this is how you base your ACM rates and stuff like that. So it's all incredibly important. So that's my, my harping lesson for today. Now, getting back to the link count, you'll see on the top right-hand corner, there's some things that makes using this calculator a little easier. There's a part where you can download the report, and it saves it as a PDF. Uh, it's got all this information. And it also, and you see that middle top tab at the top is for maps. It does a Google Maps outlay, which is a good sanity check to make sure you didn't flip a sign in your uh, coordinates and run a link in South America instead of North America, and so on and so forth. So I always like to double check that and make sure I'm on the right side of the world. Um, you can save this link to your account, so you can see all these links that you saved up at the top, and you can do a share this link. This is a tool I use a lot where customers like, hey, I ran this, I don't know what it means, so I'm like, well, you know, do the share link, send me that link, and when they email me the link, I can pull it up, and it will come up, I can see exactly all their stuff, their exact link, and then play with it and give suggestions or, you know, interpret it or what it means. Uh, on the actual map itself, uh, the things you want to be mindful of, of all the green stuff's dirt, so you'll want to avoid that. Um, if the yellow line is shooting in the dirt, the link's just not going to work because the stuff doesn't play in the dirt well. Uh, you've got your purple line, which is your first frontal zone, 
and then your little blue line just above that, which is your 60% of your first renal zone. Basically what that means, like in this link, I've got a visual line of sight between the two points. That looks good, but I've got some hill or some dirt that's mixed up within the first 60%. If it's in the first 60%, odds are you might be able to get it to link, but it's just not going to run well at all. You've got too much stuff in the way. Uh, if that one's, if the 60% is clean, and then it's just some in the first and all, then odds are it's going to run okay, but it's not going to run nearly what it could in full bore. So, like in a case like this example, you would definitely want to look up at you know getting one or both sides of your link higher, and that's something you can play with. Is go back to parameters, you know, add 50 feet on both sides, run a link, and then see what it's going to do. Um, that's all this stuff you can get a copy from street waiver off the thing so with all my explanations and that's the pretty much end of my spiel so I guess now we're going to move to some QA stuff so Richard oh, thank, you want to thank you so much Caleb we appreciate that that was a very thorough presentation and there are a number of questions before I begin with the questions the usual question that I do get is about uh, the presentation and whether or not it will be available after the fact so that people can go back and, and listen to it and pick and choose information that they need to learn more about. And the answer is absolutely. The presentation will be available. It usually takes us a couple of days, but it will be uh, posted to two locations. You'll be able to go to Streakwave Wireless's YouTube channel. It's www.youtube.com slash streakwave and you'll find the uh, presentation broken out in parts as uh, YouTube requires us to break it out into 10 or 12 minute sections, but they'll all be there uh, along with the slides and the audio so you can listen to it there. And in addition, we'll be posting this to the landing page on, uh, at streakwave.com. If you go to Legal Wave, you'll have it right there in the front, and that one actually does not need to be broken up, so you can see the whole presentation through and through along with the Q&A. So if you want to see this again or want to refer it to somebody, it will be in either of those two locations, and we invite you to do so. There's no cost to watch them. Moving on to some of the questions, there are uh, quite a few of them, and we'll try and get through them as expediently. Um, first off, um, a, a couple of people asked about whether or not any of the systems that you've talked about here can be configured as a bridge. Obviously, they're point-to-point, -point and they've been used for long-distance backhaul, but what about using them as a bridge? Uh, yeah, by it depends on your definition of bridge, but Basically, all these point-to-point -point links are all layer two max transparent bridges. So we're on everything on layer two. So as far as your networking or arc tables or anything like that is concerned, it's the same as running an Ethernet cable between two switches. So these are all bridge devices by sort of definition. Sort of by definition. So they can be used for that purpose if they want to. Yeah, sure. Um, the next question is regards the PTP 620. Can you uh -huh. talk about what the maximum distance for that link is and what you might expect the throughputs to be at the distances? It all depends so heavily on what your rain rate is. Like, again, because it's all, or most everything is above 10 gigahertz, your rain is so, like, important to how well that link's going to run. And what I could do in Nevada and Arizona is probably twice as what I can pull off with um, what I could in Florida or Oregon, you know, where there's a lot of rain and stuff like that. So I get asked that question a lot, and my default stock answer is always, you just got to run on the link calc and see what your available percentages are. Because a link that runs, you know, 200 megs, but fails every time the link, you know, every time it rains, you know, and it has to drop way back, it's just, it's a consideration. So. You know, I, I hate to get those sort of deaths and everything like that. But performance-wise, it's got the transmit power and the receive sensitivity is pretty standard against all wireless, licensed wireless products in the field, you know, all for different competitors. All this stuff basically runs about the same. So throughput and distance-wise, it's going to be equivalent to pretty much, you know, everyone else in the our competitive field with these products where the differentiators are, are price, value, licensing in terms of, uh, you know, that we give you the full speed license. It comes all the power supply, stuff like that. Um, another user asks, will smaller channel bandwidths, 5 and 10 megahertz, be available on LEGO PTP uh, MIMO products? Maybe one day, but it's not in the immediate roadmap. Mainly because almost, we thought about this, and as we started deploying them, almost all links people were trying to maximize throughput. 
and running, you know, 20 where they needed to, but 40 where they could. So we may do it eventually, but there's not an immediate plan to use a smaller channel. Okay. Yeah. There will be in the third generation, of course, which I assume is going to